What's the relationship between this and the original cosine graph? It's the same graph but upside down, which is a little bit weird. Um, what we've done is we've moved horizontally, but the effect has been a reflection. This is actually uh, this is actually something we're about to get to, but I don't have enough space on the board. This identity that cos x minus 180 is always minus cos x. This is something we're going to explore a little bit later when we look at the double angles and um, <coughs> our compound angle results. But this has been shifted. Interestingly, I still have these intercepts. Why are the intercepts unchanged? Because that's where the intercepts usually are for cos. I haven't actually gone all the way to get a full copy, right? Because the shift is only half of the period, right? But think about this. You know what the period is, it's 360. How often do you get roots? How frequently do they happen? Like I've got one at 90, I've got one at 270. What's the next one? Think, come on, it's not that hard to work out. Pretty sure the next one would be at 450, right? 450 would be there. The next one after that is going to be at 630. The roots happen every 180 degrees, don't they? Which is why between 0 and 360 you have exactly two of them. Right? Well, if the roots happen every 180 degrees, then if you go forward 180 degrees, then they still happen at all exactly the same spots. Does that make sense? So that's why the values are unchanged. Okay. Now, before I wipe off what's on the board, we said a horizontal stretch has a special name for a treat function. And the vertical stretch also has a special name. The horizontal shift gets a special name too. What color is that? Yeah. We call this the phase. This is a word that I alluded to last week, actually. right? Because sine and cosine are only off by a horizontal shift. They are out of phase with each other. Okay? So, when you hear the word phase, you need to be able to recognize what their meaning is. I've moved left or right some amount. Last little thing. Um, honest question, how many of you still listen to the radio? Because like with Spotify and stuff, I don't know if people still, yeah? What do you, what stations do you mainly listen to? 96.1? Anyone, anyone on 98.9? Anyone on 104.2? Too old, okay, whatever. Um, Radio stations that most of us listen to, right, are actually not just a number. Like, say, uh, what do we just say? 96.9? Something like that. Okay. What they really are called is um, either 96.9 FM or they put the FM out the front sometimes. Does anyone know what the F in FM stands for? Frequency. It stands for frequency, right? Now, FM is not the only kind of radio that you can reach, you can also reach. AM radio. Does anyone know what the A in AM stands for? Oh, it stands yes. for amplitude, right? Because all of the radio waves that are coming to our little receivers, in fact, all the waves, right? They're all sines and cosines. Every single one, some different combination of them. Okay. So what your FM radio is doing is it's listening, and when the frequency of that signal changes, it interprets that as a different sound. Whereas if you switch your radio over to AM, it then starts listening for something else. It doesn't start listening for how the up and down changes. Sorry, it doesn't start listening for how the frequency changes. It starts listening for how big this difference is, right? Which is why if you ever listen to an AM radio, the quality is quite poor because the further you go away, the weaker the signal gets. This just naturally gets smaller and smaller because that's the way energy works. The further it goes, the more it does that. So that's what that's talking about, and that's why AM and FM radios are what they are. Okay. okay, I'm gonna pause for a minute. There's one kind of change left that I haven't talked about. We've done stretching, we've done shifting. I actually allude to it in the very last graph that we did, which is why it's what I chose. There's another way I can change things that doesn't have to do with um, squeezing and squashing or shifting around. What would you call this? If I asked you to graph that instead, you'd get the same picture, but you wouldn't have said that what I've ended up with is a horizontal shift. What would you call that? 
Now, we've got lots and lots of words here, and I know it's somewhat confusing to mix them all up together. What you've really done, if I ask you to do this, is a reflection. Do you agree? Now, you can reflect things lots of different ways. Okay, bless you. For example, just have a look at this bag for a second. Okay. Now, I can reflect this the same way I've reflected this. Right? I'm going to do it right now. There we go. I've flipped it upside down. Do you agree? This bit that's now at the top, it used to be at the bottom, right? So I've gone across that axis. So that was the shift that I, sorry, that was the reflection I did. Being that I moved it like this, what kind of reflection would you call that? Look, I've got two kinds of everything on the board, which is this one. Hmm. Now, I would probably tend to call this a vertical reflection because the reflection is happening up and down, right? Everything that used to be down is now up. Everything that used to be up is now down. So I would call that a vertical reflection. Which then begs the question, well, what's the other kind? It's horizontal. So I don't do this. I do this. Right? You see these strings that are at the top? Uh, when I flip, reflect horizontally, the strings stay at the top. Do you agree? Okay. So what that means is... When you have a look at this now, this is a vertical reflection. So which variable is it changing, x or y? It's vertical, right? It's vertical. I'm actually changing the y's, which is why I'm going to suggest, why I'm going to suggest, this y equals minus cos x is not a helpful way to write what's going on. Do you see how it would be more instructive? Really, it's minus y equals cos x. Because what are you mucking around with? You're mucking around with the up and down, the vertical. Okay. So if you then wanted to change things that way, where would you put the minus sign? You wouldn't attach it to the y, you'd attach it to the x. Right? So for example, if I wanted to change any of these guys up here, I could do sine of minus x. That's going to look like the regular sine graph, but I'm going to go like this and reflect. If I do this, I'm going to take the regular cosine graph, and then I'm going to reflect it like this, and on and on and on. Does that make sense? Yes. 